somehow her getting what she asked for is the restaurant's fault and she's never coming again. Oh yeah, like we're gonna board that boss. Okay guys, but this video is starting to drag on, so I think we're gonna go ahead and end it here. As always, I sincerely hope you enjoyed today's video. And if there are any other subreddits you'd like me to check out or specific stories you want to send to me, feel free to share them in the comments below or tag me at Twitter. Anyways, my little creatures of the night, I will see you all next time. In the meantime, do your best to avoid any entitled parents you can. And remember, stay safe. I don't remember where I got this, but it was on the kitchen floor. Looks like something's going in the donation box. Hmm. Hey, yo. Oh, that's cute. Hey, you. What's up for now? For now, why are you leaving?
like to spam the word cloud. You can see the gear. It's not the best deal in training. It's really in the style of trying to exactly what you're saying. Even if the fabric, say, was a massive word cloud, it would probably take you to 100 times out of Earth. They're so far apart, they rarely know you want to hear each other. So rather than object to object collision being what just lodges these things and causes them to fall down toward the sun, it's not more like Hello. that. Oh, that's a nice treat. Hey, Nigel. Oh, dear. Please don't knock shit over. That would be nice. Hi. Hey, lover boy. What you doing? Nigel. Oh, I love you. This is really what I want to do right now. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, he saw there was nothing on here for him, so he just jumped back down. 
So I didn't finish uh, the patches on the chartreuse jacket. In fact, I've got a couple patches and a couple spots that I still want to put onto my violet one. But I've got like this. Uh, so the one that I'm working on plus three more. And I figured, I don't know, I might alternate between sewing and puzzles. And I really wanted to get started on a puzzle. And um, I didn't get started on it last night because I got back and I was just exhausted and by the time my uh my back started feeling better i yeah it was just like it was just late enough that i was like ah fuck it i'll do it tomorrow during the live stream so i don't know if anybody is weird enough to really <laughs> have wanted to watch me uh sewing but And forward to uh to doing a jigsaw puzzle because I I've always wanted to do one by myself, but I never really had the patience to do by myself. Like literally never. And I I enjoy them. I enjoy them, but I don't know. I just don't like people getting in the way, so I haven't done one even with other people in a long time. Oh god, how old am I? I don't even remember the last time I, you know, did one with somebody, but it's like, if it's, if it's, you know, more than 300 pieces, I just never had the patience to do it one by myself, you know, at least not consecutive, you know, like in a consecutive amount of days. Cause I know, um, you know, even 500 pieces that, uh, this one is, so, uh, this one is, uh, the, uh, Zodiac Cats or Cat Zodiac. It's from Barnes & Noble. Um, my choices that I gave myself were between this one and one with, like, two or three black cats in tulips. Ah. Pina Mass. Oh! Yeah, I just put that up yesterday. Oh, I'm just seeing things. Okay, hi there. So delighted to see on... Oh, yeah, apparently a lot of people have been missing their notifications from YouTube. Uh, and, uh, uh, um, but, uh, but yeah, um, I forget the video. It was one that he put up today, I believe, from the Rewired Soul and in his description box and the top comment. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, he, uh, he's got this link. And it's one of the videos he did today, and he does, like, at least two or three a day, which is nice, because, you know, I get to pick which ones I want to see. On the other hand, I also, I don't know, at some point, like, YouTube videos kind of feel like a chore. Um, and I've got this really convoluted system for watching YouTube videos. <laughs> I'm sure it makes no sense to anybody else in the world, but it's how I m watch my videos. A lot of times I'm two, three days behind <laughs> when somebody puts that one up, which I feel really like I try to prioritize the uh, the people with a smaller audience that I like a lot. Um, just because, um, you know, I know that, you know, if you've got a smaller audience, you've probably put, you know, a lot of work into it by yourself because um, I know what I, you know, what kind of work I put into and, you know, it's a. Uh, into it and I do it all myself where it's like uh uh, 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 my friend, uh, uh, they go by the other Winchester on, um, YouTube right now, though they're hoping to change, uh, that channel name 
um, once they get a, uh, I, I guess like my, I guess like my YouTube account is just old enough that I don't know. I've not had to, uh, do the, uh, the whole, like, wait until you've got a hundred or some subscribers to, uh, change your channel name. I was able to change mine because like I said, I guess mine's just old enough. Um, that it got like grandfathered into, you know, the older policies, but, um, what was I saying about them? Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. They've got a friend who, uh, who did like this little like outro animation for their, for theirs. And they've got, uh, they've got an audience, like maybe 10 people more than I do. Yeah, which is good for them. I mean, you know, it looks like they put, you know, quite a bit more work into things than I do. And I had just such a spotty upload schedule and I didn't do live streams for the longest time. And, you know, they've got these fancy uh, title cards at the beginning. And I'm just like, you know, I'm just doing this all on my phone. But yeah, yeah, I did the, uh, I did the uh, um, uh, review for the Hainama. And I, uh, I filmed that all, oh God, this, that took, that was like, so frustrating because I guess I ended up doing the I ended up like accidentally resetting uh, the settings on my camera so it was filming um, my camera phone it was filming in like ultra high def and I was wondering like why the hell is my uh, is this video like saying that it's got so much space on it but um but yeah like once I finally figured out that it had been reset to high def and um and it took me the longest time to remember that I actually had it set to standard def for uh, for um, shooting video, you know, as opposed to live. Um, so uh, so then what happened? Um, yeah, I was I was actually like really glad that I was able to get that all like um, filmed and edited in one night. And at yeah, it was after I was done with that, I was just like, okay, I'm gonna have dinner and then figure out what the hell I'm doing. And then I'm like, okay, you know, I probably should take some pain medication, um, maybe a Xanax because just the whole like thing with the camera was just so frustrating. And I had horrible dry mouth with that uh, video last night. And you will see a lot of jump cuts since you said you haven't watched it yet. But yeah, like, so it's full of jump cuts because I had this horrible dry mouth last night and stupid me doesn't think to like reach down. And I had this like this, you know, bottle of coconut water, you know, like right there at my feet. And that doesn't occur to me to check and, you know, like take a sip of that at some point until after the video is completed. But at that point, I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm not reshooting this. I, this just, this was the bane of my existence for three days until I finally figured out that I'd, uh, that I'd reset the camera. I have no, I, I don't know either. I try to, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that I am not the biggest fan of spamming people. Like, uh, oh, I've been, I don't know if you've heard of her. She, uh, she's, uh, she's kind of big in the, uh, horror and goth community, Ugly Shyla. She does those, uh, creepy art dolls. Uh, uh, she's, uh, she's, she's best known for the ones that, you know, are, uh, um, are tributes to dead children that, well, like famous dead children or just like really like horribly disfigured zombie children. She does a lot of those. And, um, and yeah, like, uh, she's, um, I, I know that she, she's like the queen of self-promoting and she, you know, she can, she like, oh God, she, she can sell anything. Like she could sell a, you know, like she could, she could sell like a, a, a ketchup popsicle to a woman wearing white gloves. And me, I'm like, even if I do believe it, believe in what I'm, you know, selling, I can't do it for shit. I'm just like, I don't know. I don't like to be pushy. I was always like, that's, that's one of my big failings when I was working at McDonald's for a while. Can this thing come on? There we go. Enable flash. And it's going to suck up some battery, but um oh yeah yeah she's uh yeah she does um wonderfully creepy art um and uh but yeah like, she can she can sell anything to anyone if you ask me and uh she uh 
she does you know like if you're if you're talking to her about it like i don't know she's just like oh i just i just do it you know you, you gotta be able to sell yourself when you know you're employed and i'm like well yeah i understand that i'm like <laughs> i was like and i totally you know and i understand like the pr i understand the principles that you know you gotta you know believe in what the hell you're selling but uh which i do uh but like fuck it i'm just like i don't know i'm tor i'm terrible at spamming people i i can't do that i'm just like i know how annoying this looks so it's like I, I'm, I don't know, sometimes I think I've hit upon, you know, a way to do it that feels less icky, like, uh, like, I know the, uh, the, like, hashtagging on Instagram, I do that fairly well, um, I do that well enough, so I just gotta, like, um, figure out a way to translate that to, uh, to spreading the word on YouTube as well. Um, uh, but, uh, but yeah, I was, uh, I did do that. Um, so yeah, I've got, a uh, something, 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 I don't know, but, um, all right. So I've got a music page on Facebook and of course those don't fit. Those are nowhere near the same size. Um, but yeah, so I've got a page for my music on Facebook and, um, I don't have enough, a lot of music recorded, so I haven't done a whole lot with it, but I've started cross-posting my, um, my YouTube videos on there, and I, I, I did, uh, start tagging, um, Emanion Press and some of the writers, at least for the Raythu review videos, so, um, so hopefully that is my, uh, that, that will help me start breaking this nasty habit of being unable to promote my own shit, which is like, I don't know, it's like career suicide when you're an independent artist and musician. And why the hell am I still wearing the apron? I got done with the dishes well over an hour ago. Shit. Uh, <laughs> sure. I that I bought myself. It's definitely one off of Woot, but like if I bought it for myself or if my friend Scott bought it for me. Uh, 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 no. What is this? No. That might make sense. Ah, there we go. I knew I was going to find one that fit eventually. There's only so many edge pieces. Uh, uh, I would really love to, you know, just like do this chat for, um, you know, this live stream. Oh, I did follow. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, it's the only other S M I have been getting, uh, more and more, um, disenchanted with Facebook lately, but Unfortunately, the uh, the station that I work on, uh, and I need to replace the power supply in my computer so I can actually log on for a change. Um, but yeah, the uh, the station that I work on, that's like pretty much uh, what our uh, what the radio station manager has decided is like the way that he's communicating with all the other DJs and. You know, so I kind of have to stay on Facebook for basically what amounts to doing work. So it could be worse. Um, oh, God. No, I tried to fit that one into that one a few times, so. Okay. Ah. Oh. This is going to be the first jigsaw puzzle by myself I've ever, that I've ever completed by myself. Probably the first one that I've done since high school. Yeah, if it's if I can't even really remember um, when the last one when the last time it was that I'd done one with anybody ever, um, then it was probably high school that was the last time I did it. Okay, okay, and. Ch -ch -ch. 
think. Uh, okay, and... I, I kind of like living by myself for the same reason I've always wanted to do a jigsaw puzzle by myself, but uh, before the... Uh, before the ADHD meds, I just never had the patience. And that is, is I don't want other people messing with my shit. And it's not that I, it's not that I'm antisocial. I'm the exact opposite of antisocial. I'm far more social than most of the guys I've ever dated. And which is a little odd to see like, you know, more introverted and less socially active game well then again most of my exes have been bought the last one was gay the last one was gay actually the last two were gay um but um oh crap did i miss an edge piece i think i did Yeah, I must have missed one. Son of a bitch. Okay, those go there, and those go there, and those go there. No. Okay, that. Oh, there we go. Capricorn. Okay, what the hell is under here? I've got some newspaper under this because I do want to glue it together when I'm done. Um, my stepmother and I always did that. Huh. Maybe that's why the bug's been up my ass to do jigsaw puzzles this last week. I don't know if... Uh, if you saw any of it, of, you know, my running commentary as various family dramas unfolded b before me, but my, uh, my stepbrothers are some hateful little sons of bitches. No, oh, that's the, uh, earlier message. But, uh, yeah, my, uh, my stepmother died a little over a year ago, and I ended up finding out all by myself because... Uh, one of them, uh, the, the way I understand it is he was just feeling like really oughta, that he really wanted to spite my, uh, my, um, my older sister who he never really liked. Uh, oh, there it is. There's that one I was looking for that I thought, but yeah, so, uh, so yeah, I've got newspaper here, um. But, uh, yeah, I really liked my stepmother, like, as much as a stepkid could like a stepparent, you know, well, you know, a stepparent who, you know, wasn't, you know, basically on Airsoft's, um, one of, uh, you know, their, uh, their biological parents in the case, you know, was like, my mother... She was there until I was about 12. Yeah, more like 11 and a half. But, uh, but then what happened? And, um, so my father got custody because mom was a later in life lesbian. And this was 1991 in Ohio. So there's no way my mother was getting custody. And, uh, then what happened? Um, my dad remarried, uh... Let's see, Dad and Alice married in 92, so I just turned 12. Oh, I was 10 and a half then. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, I just turned 12, and, um... Oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, please don't fall off the table. So, yeah, the, uh, the newspaper, so I can glue it all together when I'm done. And, uh, and then what happens is, um... A whole lot of crap and stuff, apparently. Okay. Mm, excuse me. No. 
Okay, so this has got to be for this side then. Does? No. Now it looks more like this side. Oh wait, this side is done. Oh, no it's not. That's what you get when a blind boy tries to put a puzzle together by himself. Well, okay, I'm borderline low vision, but close enough. I thought they matched. Okay, so this one, this bit should go up here. This is going to end up a bit longer than I have room for right now, so. No, that's not going to work. Okay. Snappers there. And. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, here we go. Mm. Oh, yeah, she, uh, my stepmother had a uh, rheumatoid arthritis since she was literally a toddler. So. Yeah, I thought I was being the good kid, and I thought I was the one being the bigger person. I thought she'd blown me off and was just, like, being polite about it when she was saying that, you know, she looked forward to writing to me. And, uh, but no, what happened was that uh, apparently she died, and then nobody told me. In fact... One of my stepbrothers, like, pretty much lied right to my older sister's face. I mean, older half-sister, sure, but still, it's like, you know, that's kind of not how our family regards things. Like, uh, I would have been immediately told to apologize if I'd you know, insisted on half-sister and calling her that half-sister or whatever. Because, uh, because by my father's reasoning, it, you know, it would make people, you know, it would make the other person feel like, you know, they're not as, you know, important when the, uh, when the real deal is that, you know, you just, you know, only got, like, one parent between each other. It's probably not the way I wanted to word that, but no. There we go. That looks like it fits. Yeah, no. Is that that? Yes, that is that. Okay. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I'm probably going to have to move shit around on the table. God damn it. <laughs> yes. All right. Oh, yay. I've got a corner. Oh, yep. I'm going to have to move some shit around. Okay. So, uh, these would be, uh, Demitas cups. I love this set. I got these, oh god, a few years ago, 
and they've barely moved off the table since I got them. But, uh, and I should wash them. But, uh, so yeah, I, uh, one of my, uh, one of my divination practices that I do as, uh, I read Turkish coffee. Oh, those do come out. Okay. Uh, so yeah, this would be a Demitas set for that. And we've got sterling silver, uh, saucers and little cup handles. And the spoons were not part of the set, but, you know, this, you gotta have spoons when you've got the Demitas cups, so. All right, gonna, uh, I should have gotten out the goddamn tape measure first, but. I was excited. I was running close to the time I said I would, and I gotta do shit like I say I would. Okay, so let's see. We got more, more silver. I have a problem with collecting silver. So let's see. We can stick these there. And this goes with the plastic bag recycling. Okay. Okay. What's... Oh! I thought it was going to be scary inside the butler. I really did. I really was afraid this was going to be scary. It was a little heavier than I remembered it being, but thankfully that's just because there was um, another silver dish inside of it. Well, I can put the butler right there. And uh, I just threw the bag into the sink so that I, uh, oh, onion peels. Those are great. Is that? Oh, that does look like it fits. Oh, yay. Yay. And yay. And... Oh. oh, okay. That's how that piece goes. Okay. There we go. Okay, I think I did miss some other um, edge pieces. Okay.
Okay. So. I like that this is broken up into, you know, a grid of, you know, the, uh, the four by three. So that, you know, cause Zodiac, right. Um, because that means I can do one section at a time. <laughs> okay. And I think I'm going to work my way up and, uh, well, you know, unless I come across those couple of edge pieces that I missed. Uh, unless a cat took them. That would be terrible. Walking. Oh, right. Yeah, I uh, was mentioning something earlier, and then I got sidetracked again and again a couple times. But uh, yeah, I, I, I would love <laughs> nothing more than to, you know, just like keep um, uh, doing the live stream until like well into the a.m. hours. I'd love to just like sit here and just like do this puzzle all goddamn night, but I'm going to have to. Uh, uh, I can't keep doing this very long um, where the hell is this one supposed to go? Um, oh, let's say there. Uh, cause I've got a doctor's appointment. I have to get up early enough for, uh, tomorrow. Um, and when I say early enough, it's like, uh, my doctor knows that, you know, I can't really be scheduled, you know, for, uh, any time. Um, definitely not before noon, ideally not before two. Unfortunately, um, even though I do have a, uh, I do have a car service, uh, the, uh, the A-Ride, which is that bus pass that I use, uh, which I lovingly call the cripple pass, <laughs> uh, cause it's available to the disabled and the elderly and where's this one? Oh, this one's up there. Um, and then what happens? Um, so yeah, it's available to the disabled and the elderly. And so on the... Um, so it's, uh, it works two ways and I don't know where you're from, but, um, but I did a video, uh, about a little over a year ago, I want to say about why the public transportation in Michigan is awful. And, you know, because there's a, there's quite a history behind that. And, um, and, uh, then what happens, um, so, um, so yeah, the, uh, uh, Ann Arbor, um, and, you know, the, also the Ypsilanti area, because in spite of it being technically two different cities, let's say this goes here for now, um, it, uh, you know, that's basically one area, what passes for a metro area around here, like this far out of Detroit. Where the hell is this one supposed to go? Oh, okay, let's see there. Um, but uh, yeah, Ann Arbor was one of the first areas to basically um, buy their public transit system back from uh, Ford Motors, and that's the short version. Um, 
and uh, then what happened. So um, so yeah, they uh, they've got a. Uh, while it does suck, there are certainly places where it is indeed worse. Um, and you know, I mean, I don't want to sound ungrateful because you know, I, you know, this is one of the few cities in Michigan where I can actually like you know live and have some kind of you know adult function. You know, being a low vision person. Where the hell does this one go? I'll figure it out. Wait, wait, no. No? I don't know. Oh, no, that's the chair leg that goes on that one. Uh, so then what happens? So, um, oh, yes, I did miss one. Sweet. Wait, where the hell? I don't understand this piece. Okay, I'll figure it out. Um, so then what happens? So, uh, so on the good side, like one of the one of the uh, things with the A ride pass is it's basically a free bus pass. I mean, yeah, you have to you know like have your um, application reevaluated every couple of years, but you know I've got a free bus pass until my birthday of next year, so twenty twenty, um, and then what happens? Um, but uh, the other perk to it is that I, um, I think this is how here, uh, is that you've got this, uh, low cost, uh, car service. So, you know, kind of like Uber, I guess, or, you know, like an actual regulated taxi, which it basically is. And, you know, they, uh, um, unfortunately, because I live in Ypsilanti, I have to, uh, call and schedule my rides, um, the day before and they say you know just because you know um just because of the uh, uh the the amount of people who actually need the service um uh they say allow um or you know to uh to um figure in your head for like up to an hour um before uh um uh, what's that thing called? The, uh, the pickup. So, like, ex no, 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 no. Um, expect an hour, so plan for up to a 15-minute window of time um, between uh, the, uh, the scheduled pickup time and the time that they actually come pick you up, which I'm like, really? So, uh, okay, that is a thing and uh but uh but then what happened uh then the other thing is um up to an hour between ah uh, oh that's wait yeah oh crap heard you talk about live journal oh yeah live journal's wonderful uh love him oh yeah my parents would go oh damn i missed all of this this didn't give me anything Okay, I'm from Houston, but moved uh, to the deep piney woods of East Texas a few years ago. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, the, uh, so yeah, um, then what happens is, um, hi, kitty. So yeah, uh, yeah, they say to allow up to an hour in the car uh, once they come pick you up. So hopefully I will get to my appointment closer to the uh scheduled time of my appointment uh because i did not call until yesterday and even though it's like 48 hours in advance i uh you know they still like the ideal time they would have come pick me up that was already you know that was already taken and you know like they already had like all their cars all their drivers for you know tomorrow booked up so I'm like, really? This is this is what I do today. This is, uh, but um, so yeah, I I gotta get to bed a little bit earlier than I would like to, but I gotta be a responsible adult and go see my doctor, even though it's just the quarterly medeval because I'm on so many medications that are technically controlled substances. And, uh, and I think this one goes here. Oh, there's another one. Oh, oh, is that that one that? Yes. 
Okay. Number eight, mystery of the fish. Founding member of United Artists, friends to Charlie Chaplin, the swashbuckling lead of the Mask of Zorro, Robin Hood, Douglas Fairbanks was a world famous screen idol in the 1920s. Before he made the leap to screen God, though, Fairbanks appeared in some rather odd films. One such picture that you would have to regret appearing in was the mystery of the fish. The film is a parody of the Sherlock Holmes stories and lampoons the detectives love of all things narcotic. It features the oh, escort sleuth subtly named Coke any day, smoking and injecting his way through a literal bucket load of cocaine and opium. Like an untrained child still waiting to be potty trained, his clock only has four settings. Eat, sleep, go, and drink. <laughs> Solving mysteries or work is clearly not a priority for this laissez fair Sherlock. The boss's bizarre day on Arthur Conan Doyle's most famous creation has long since taken on cult status. The Museum of Modern Art in New York City screened a restored Ben Putman with the print version of the film in January of 2009. Number seven, Egar. Here's the whole plot of Egar, which was probably drafted on. Oh my gosh! Yeah, the hate man appears in 1960s California and falls in love with a pretty Californian girl. Financed by Archall Sr. as a starring vehicle for his son, Archall Jr., it is another film in the long line of splendidly awful movies that have gained notoriety after appearing on Mystery Science Theater 3000. All seniors off screen line look out for snakes, despite their being not on the screen, became something of a running joke on Mystery Science Theater 3000, and it was also referenced in The Office. Number six, Monster A Go Go. As couple productions go, this is right up there with Apocalypse Now. Oh, I, I'm listening. I don't know if you can hear it. I've got a, um, uh, today I found out. Well, I've got a whole, like, you know, my, uh, my cue from, um, what's it called? YouTube playing on the television. And he's. That's where this one goes. That's why I got confused. Yeah, they're doing this video about terrible films, and uh, of course, he, has, he just brought up Ed Wood just now, and one of the things, ah, uh, I have a habit of reading the secret books of parodies after I finished. 
Yeah, um, let's have the same edition. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh. Oh, right, Ed Wood. Yeah, one of the things that I love about Ed Wood is, like, while his... uh. Oh, oh, Tanith Lee, right? Is that who you're talking about posthumously? Ah. Yeah, yeah. I love Ed Wood movies because, you know, while it's clear that his abilities at storytelling and any part of the screenwriting process was just you know, very inept to say, you know, to be the kindest. They're in his movies are enjoyable in ways that like um people who, you know, like try to make cheesy, like uh B B grade um you know send-ups of you know would just kind of fail. Uh you know, if you like try to make something that's so you know that's so bad it's enjoyable, you're going to fail. Whereas, you know, like Ed Wood, like I don't know, there was this this kind of this uh this this sort of like childlike um way that he um that that he that he took to things and you know like i yeah it's like uh uh if you've seen the uh the axe cop comic book or i, I think it was a comic strip first on the on the internet i think it was a web comic first but yeah if you've seen that like you know it started that you know it was this you know like this this guy who like drew comics uh, he would have his like five year old little brother, um, you know, like write the scripts. <laughs> and there's something about Wood that, you know, that's that's kind of like how his films feel. And it's clear that, you know, he just cast the uh, the characters, you know, that he just cast his friends as characters. And, you know, you can tell that there's a couple of them at least, you know, who, uh, you know, who were regulars in his movies who you can kind of tell that they're giving you a nudge and a wink that they know how bad this is, but you know, they're friends with Ed and he's fun to work with. And, you know, he actually paid unlike some directors. I mean, he didn't pay much, but he paid and, you know, you knew you'd get an honest day's work out of doing an Ed Wood movie. And, you know, maybe, you know, if you were like the one, you know, good actor in an Ed Wood movie <laughs> would stand out. And, you know, there's a couple of the, uh, shit, shit, shit. I forget his name. But, uh, oh yeah. Yeah. I, sh I forget his name. I forget his name. Uh, uh, Conrad, Conrad. That's part of his name. I can't remember if it was his first name or his last name, but, um, but yeah, he was, uh, he, he did, uh, he did an ep um, uh, mystery science theater, um, did an interview bit for one of the DVD box sets. And, you know, you, you can tell that, you know, his tongue was in cheek the whole way through this little interview that he was just loving it that, you know, and yeah, he, he pretty much said that, yeah, you know, all of his friends, you know, we knew these were not good movies, but we did anyway, because we were friends with Ed and, and, and that's what's so enjoyable about Ed Wood, like, you know, it's clear that this was just like a bunch of, you know, friends of the director making a movie that, you know, a lot of them certainly knew was not good, but. Okay. I think... Oh, this goes here. Uh, I need to get one of those uh, puzzle sorter trays.
grounds. In addition, a less concrete but nonetheless commonly adhering rule is that when naming a newly discovered species, you shouldn't name it after yourself. Why? Well, in the words of the Virginia Museum of Natural History's curator emeritus Judith Winston, that's tacky. According to Winston, it's also considered somewhat uncouth to combine Greek and Latin when they mean new creature with some taxonomy purists out there who would look down upon the person who did this, even though it doesn't break any specific rule. We're also going to assume here that those people are also not the current party. <coughs> Moving on, it's noted that so long as the rules are followed, a person wishing to name a new creature can pretty much give it whatever name they like. In doing so, many of targeted celebrities, both because it's a great way to get more publicity towards a dead scientist's work, and also sometimes because it's a nice way to honor a famous person. For example, consider the case of Ferdinando Guerrero, a jellyfish expert and fan of the musician Frank Zappa. He decided that he oh, was a right. passion so that he could honor and meet his musical idol. To do this, Guerrero, who resided in Genoa, Italy, applied for a prestigious fellowship to study jellyfish in Northern California. Yeah, I remember hearing about the uh, the jellyfish named after Frank Zappa. Once it identified a few, he wrote to Zappa asking the singer if it would like the honor of being immortalized forever as the official scientific name of the cool jellyfish. Zappa replied, telling Guerrero in a letter penned by his wife, There is nothing I'd like better than having a jellyfish named after me. After receiving the letter, Guerrero gathered up a number of samples and rushed to Zappa's LA mansion to ask the singer which jellyfish he felt was connected to. Zappa <laughs> obliged, picking out his favorite jellyfish, which Guerrero went on to name Fia Leda Zappa in his honor. In yet another case of a celebrity being honored by such a name, we have a snail from northern Queensland that is the only member of the genus Crikey, literally named Crikey Steve Owen I in honor of the name of Yarl. The key word to note in the previous sentence is honor, because as far as we can tell, virtually every case in which a celebrity or person of scientific prominence has had something named after them, they consider it to be a compliment, even if the creature isn't exactly something you think a person would be happy to be linked with forever. For example, consider the case of Barak Shrema Abarmai, the official scientific name for a type of parasitic <laughs> flatworm that lives in the blood of ancient fox turtles. Now, when it was first reported that parapsychologist Thomas Platt had chosen this name for the parasite, it was framed by some in the press as a deliberate knowing gesture hey, hey, hey. of precedent. However, oh. Platt would later clarify that he intended for the gesture to be an honest compliment to Obama, noting that the creature reminded him of the president because it's wrong, it's Where the thin, fuck? Oh, now, never mind. That makes sense now. By other taxonomists to explain the various interviews about parasites, but naming anything after a person is generally considered a huge honor in the world of taxonomy because it's basically enshrining that person inside of a literature forever. A similar example from the other side of the political aisle is the moth Neopalpa Donald Trump eye, species of moth endemic to North America named after the then president elect Donald Trump. As with the reported discovery and naming of Barrett Trump and Barney, some in the media chose to interpret the names of Jeff and Trump. The fact that the moth is mostly unremarkable, save for the fact that the male of the species has oddly small genitalia, <laughs> it's not the patriots, only name for even more hyperbolic headlines. In truth, though, the moth's discoverer, Lazarus Mazzari, chose the name because the moth possesses scales on its head reminiscent of Donald Trump's distinctive hairstyle, which, looking at the picture, only kind of does. Nazari would also note that he hopes naming the moth after the president would highlight the importance of conversation of these fragile habitats that still contain undescribed and threatened species. On that note, Nazari's decision to name the moth after Trump due to it resembling him in some manner is the popular naming trends with new species, some of our favorite examples of which include a spider named after Johnny Cash discovered near Folsom Prison in California, the lighter singer is dressed in all black. This was called Afana Palmer Johnny Cash Eye. Then there's a bee named after Beyonce, notable for having a gigantic golden birth with the name of staging. I figured if I'm ever going to name a species after Beyonce, this is it. It's called Scaphia Beyonce. Then there's a beetle named after Arnold Schwarzenegger due to possessing a pair of legs that resemble large flexed biceps. It's called Ivra Schwarzenegger Eye. There's also a parasitic no. moth named after Shapira due to its habit of causing whatever it infects to convulse and twist by his belly dancing, and that's called Aeodes Shapiri. There are literally so many of these that we couldn't ever possibly mention them all here. But now it's time we get back to the original. Okay, it looks like there's one more edge piece in here somewhere. There must be one scientist who named the creature okay. after someone they disliked simply out of spite. Well, it turns out there is at least one. It's credited to none other than Carl Linnaeus himself. 
The Nets apparently got so sick of a botanist called Johan Siegers deck criticising his work that he named what has been described as a small, useless European weed art here. The curious, the weed's scientific name is simply Siegers deck here. Outside of this exception, it appears that academics almost always choose to adhere to the rule of naming things in such a way as to not cause anyone offence. And it is generally considered a great honour to have a creature named after you, regardless of how mm. utterly unsavoury that creature may be. And now for a bonus fact. There's a remarkable species of blind cave beetle called Anaflamus hitleri, named after Hitler. Yes, that Hitler. The discoverer of the species, after oh, Schiebel, named wait, yes. Hitler after okay. Hitler, after it became the Chancellor of Germany, and actually Hitler's delight, who wrote Schiebel a letter of thanks. The name of the beetle is, understandably, a source of controversy in taxonomy circles, but it's generally agreed that naming something should never be done. This is rather unfortunate for the beetle, as its name has resulted in becoming popular with collectors and neo-Nazis who have hunted it to near extinction. So, mm. if you found that video interesting, if you did, please do give us a thumbs up below. Don't forget to subscribe. Brand new videos just like this every day of the week. If you're looking for more stuff from us, please do check out another channel we do called Fact Quickie. Wait. Shorter videos. How, How the hell does this not fit here? You'll find that link to below. And as always, thank you for watching. Oh, it's because this one doesn't fit here. That makes sense. I think this one goes there. Okay. And yes. Oh, I think this goes here. Kitties. I've got kitties. I have four kitties. Three kitties. And the reason that I have three kitties is because... I do not want, well, actually, it's because I don't have room for four. Uh, my friend Patrick says that three is the right number of cats to have. That uh, It's just the right number of cats to keep things interesting. Oh, yeah. When I was sitting for somebody's cat who ended up needing um, a lot more medical attention than they had led me to believe when I first took the job, I ended up having to bring the cat over to my place, and I found out that there is probably just barely enough room for four in here comfortably but it's really pushing it and after a couple days uh nigel and this other cat just did not get along and that was sad but he had to stay here because uh, he had to get his medicine and uh um and also he literally got too lonely to eat like he stopped eating at some point. And I'm like, you know what? I'm I'm breaking my back 
um, getting over here to give him his medicine, so I'll just as soon bring him home with me, and, you know, since it's only going to be until Rod and his wife get back from Mexico, and, but, uh, yeah, like, I'd literally never seen a cat get so lonely he refused to eat before, and... That's just like, I'm like, why did you even leave? Like, and, you know, like, I told them about that. And, you know, that's actually like one of those instances that like kind of ended the friendship. But I think I can safely say that, you know, any reasonable person would say it was not my fault at all that they are just a couple of dickwads. But yeah, it's one of those, I'm like, like, they knew that that the cat was, like, extremely social and got really attached to people. And I was just, like, I don't know. I was just so livid that, you know, they would just, like, go on vacation like this. And, you know, expect this cat to be okay. I'm like, no. Like, if this was your literal child that you birthed from your loins, you would not do that. I mean, at the very least, you know, you'd think you'd find a sitter who could, you know, like, you know, stay at your place for a bit or, you know, didn't have space issues to worry about with their own other cats. I mean, I found a way to, you know, keep the peace with uh, him and Nigel not getting along, but. Hey, Nigel, bud. Do you hear me talking about Batty? Yes, you do. What's up, lover boy? Hi. Hello, my love. Nigel thinks he's my boyfriend. I I can't I can't spank off in peace because of this cat. He likes to watch. It's creepy. Oh, the latest ex. He thought it was hilarious until, <laughs> you know, when he was just hearing about it. But then, you know, we're, we're trying to get, get it on and Nigel's watching. <laughs> and then suddenly, like, Isaac's all like, oh, put a blanket over, throw a blanket over him. I'm like, yeah, it's, oh, it's, it's funny when it's just me that he's staring at. and purring very loudly while he ne was kneading his paws on the velvet blanket. I'm like, y you just, y you really just can't get any creepier as a cat. Hello everyone. Today, we are going to look at the case in America. So sit back as we go to the 1930s Ohio. Ooh. This sounds right up my alley. was born on the 7th of July, 1906, in a small southern Bavarian town, Wetter, which was situated about a kilometre from the German border with Austria. Yeah. She was the youngest of 12 children, of which eight were boys. At the time of Anne Marie's birth, her parents had already lost three children. Two more would be killed in action during World War I. She was very ill as a child and spent five months in the hospital due to blood poisoning. Everyone thought she would not fall through, but remarkably, she survived. Being the youngest girl, she was spoiled by her parents, and as she grew up, she became a difficult child. She never completed high school and spent most of her teenage years going to parties and socialising. As she became more difficult, her parents sent her to live with her sister in Holland. They thought a new country and a new environment. Mm. Might help her to become more Oh, we're almost done with the sorting. Her disciplinary issues. It didn't. And instead of becoming a more respectable member of the community, she had an affair with a position. Oh, 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 okay. I see what part this is now. No records have been found for a Viennese doctor by the name she gave. But she had an affair with someone. She became pregnant. And after returning home, she gave birth on the 31st of May, 1925 to a son she named Oscar. This was very frowned upon in 1920s Germany, and she became the centre of attention for all the local gossip in the small Bavarian town. Her 
once decided that it would be best if Oscar stayed in their care and Anna should go to the USA to seek out new opportunities. She agreed with this idea, but she had to wait a long time for her visa. Eventually, on February 11, 1929, she entered a second-class cabin on a ship bound for New York. Her final destination was Cincinnati, as her parents had arranged for her to stay with her elderly uncle and aunt, named Max and Anna Doshel, who were oh. both in their 70s. Anna needed to make some money, so decided to offer her services as a living nurse to elderly men in the Cincinnati German community. She was an attractive woman, and she considered herself to be a giving and caring person, but the fact that she had no training or experience in nursing didn't bother her. She would go to the many German beer gardens and sing whole Bavarian beer ballads, moving table to table with a sweetened smile at her elderly admirers. She soon started working for a 71-year-old retired banker named Charles Oswald. He soon started falling for her charming ways. He became very fond of her. Their working relationship ended suddenly when he discovered that Anna had transferred 27 Union Gas and Electric shares into her name and also transferred $700 into her bank account from his. She said he had given them to her and she was never charged with any wrongdoing. She sold the shares and started working as a chambermaid in the Hotel Allen's. Soon after, she met fellow German immigrant Philip Hahn who worked as a telegraph operator, and after a brief courtship, they married in 1930. Anna then returned to Germany to get her son Oscar, and the three of them set up home in Cincinnati. Philip had always wanted to run his own business, so the couple saved their money and eventually managed to open two delicatessen. They moved into a large house and rented rooms from 62-year-old Ernest Collar. When they arrived at his house, he was already very ill. Anna nursed him, but he died soon afterwards, and in his will, he left her his large boarding house. There was a suspicion that he may have been poisoned, but his death certificate stated he died from throat cancer. Dr. Arthur Voss had a practice on the first floor of the house, and Anna found this very convenient, as she was able to steal blank prescriptions, which meant she could keep herself supplied with medicine for her new nursing business. Anna did not consider that her and her husband were producing enough income to sustain the lifestyle she wanted, so she came up with another money-making scheme. A suspicious fire broke out at her shop. The fire didn't cause much damage, but the insurance company still paid her $300. She must have been careless with matches, as two other fires broke out at her house. The insurance company eventually paid her a settlement of over $2,000 for the house fires. This was 1930s America, during the Great Depression. Mm. By 1933, there was a high level of unemployment in Ohio. Anna and her husband decided to sell the delicatessen, and this was soon followed by them losing their house, as they failed to make mortgage payments. But not long after this, Anna's elderly relatives suddenly died, and left her their house. Anna had a proper home again. Mm. She was happy in the knowledge that her family was secure. The death of her aunt and uncle was followed.
which meant that Anna just went away to look for more patients to care for. Her next client, Albert Parker, a 72 year old retired gardener, Wait. mysteriously died in March 1937. Oh, that's how it works. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's right there. Okay. All right. There we go. Claim 
and she has comforted them in their twilight years. She was good and so grateful and left her money and property in their wills. What Anna didn't know was that the police had already searched her home and found a very large amount of poison. Her husband, Philip, had informed officials of how his wife had stolen the blank prescription from Dr. Ross. Anna's 12-year-old son, Oscar, confirmed that he went to Colorado with his mother and George. He said that George had started getting ill on the train after Anna had given him something to drink. The police in Colorado wanted Anna to stand trial there, but the Cincinnati police decided they had enough evidence to charge her. And on August 10, 1937, she was arrested and charged with the murder of one of her patients. No, of course that one fit there. That makes no sense. Anna Marie Barnes' trial began on October 11, 1937, and she pleaded not guilty. Hmm. The jury consisted of 11 women and one man. From the start, the prosecution insisted that Anna had killed Jacob Wagner out of greed, pointing out that his money and state had motive for murder. Many witnesses were called, including handwriting experts, pharmacists, and other people she had cared for. The prosecution also presented the court with exhibits, which included the internal organs of both Jacob Wagner and Albert Palmer. The newspapers dubbed her the beautiful blonde killer, and she enjoyed all the press attention throughout her trial. She gave interviews to journalists. Oh, I know. A movie that was loosely inspired by this. I believe the original, no, 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 that would have been older than this. Yeah, yeah, Chicago, the original Chicago would have been older than this case. I don't even know if you can hear what's going on on the television behind me, but it's awfully similar, though. Hmm. December the 1st, 1937. Her lawyers appealed the sentence, and on March the 10th, execution date came and went. Her case passed through the Ohio court system a few times before being taken to the United States Supreme Court, and after reviewing the case, agreed with the sentence passed by the state of Ohio. Oh, there we go. That's not that fit there. On Wednesday, December the 7th, 1938, Anna wrote four separate letters. At eight o'clock in the evening, she entered the chamber and sat in the electric chair. She was 32 years old and was the first woman to die in the electric chair in Ohio. On December the 17th, 1938, Anna's lawyer announced that the letters Anna had given him the night of her execution had been sold to the Cincinnati Inquirer and the money was put into trust for Anna's son. The next day, the paper announced that they would be publishing the letters over the following two days. The letters told of her life in Germany and her eventual immigration to the United States. She then began to recount the circumstances that she claimed eventually led to her life of crime. Anna's son, who was then 12 years old, was placed to a foster family in the Midwest. The newspapers kept his promise to Anna of taking his education and never revealing his name or whereabouts to the public. The only thing ever released about Oscar was that he lived a normal life and eventually fought for the Navy during World War II. Hello everyone, thank you so much for listening. As usual, please leave any feedback or comments. Okay, I've got Sagittarius done except for one piece, which is probably with another section. So I'm going to work my way to the right.
Oh, there's somebody else on uh, this other video that just started playing who's uh, who may uh, have synesthesia. I seem to have that. Um, I've got a, a oral tactile synesthesia, so um, I literally feel music. Um, only certain instruments. Um, but... Um, but yeah, I, uh, I I thought that was something that you know, like like a lot of uh, synesthetes. I thought that was something that literally everybody you know uh, could do because you know you'd hear people and apparently like a lot of people just talk to you euphemistically about feeling the music and I'm like, you know, I thought like. You know, that was like, you know, more than just, you know, like I figured that was like some kind of like thing where it's like, you know, technically a euphemism, but it's uh, or not, not a euphemism, but uh, um, oh shit, you know, that, that it's, you know, supposed to allude to, you know, something that most, if not all people actually go through. And then like, uh, I'd actually been curious about synesthesia for a while and I put some cases of synesthesia in my um, notebook full of song ideas, and uh, then I came across, um, you know, the definition for oral tactile synesthesia, and I I think that's the case with me. Apparently not, not you know. Apparently most people do not literally feel music. You know, I thought it was just like you know one of those kinds of sayings that's supposed to allude to you know. A common thing like, you know, like, I don't know, like crying with joy or something. This is all such a long process that I'm actually really trying to push it into only a few days. So, and to color my hair in a light long tone, um, use this hair color from Lauren Mellon. I'll also be using this. Okay, what the hell kind of crap is under this newspaper? And that is great. I think this piece might not go here, but I will find out. So, as we can see, my hair is still wet, but the top is already dry. Oh, there it is. Okay, Sagittarius is now finished. That uh, that true crime story I was hearing about from the previous YouTube video was uh, a lot of it took place in Cincinnati, and now I've got the song, uh, the theme song for WKRP, stuck in my head. This is gonna drive me nuts, cause Hulu took away my WKRP reruns. I'm showing my age with that phrase, because I don't think people say reruns anymore when they're talking about old television show episodes. Do people still say reruns? Trying to see. 
investigate, you know, foul puzzle piece. There we go. Oh, yep. Oh. Please go there. I know you do. Cincinnati WKIP. I wonder, wonder whatever became of me. I'm living on the air in Cincinnati. Cincinnati WKRP. Who's the second person? So this one might go with that one. It seriously would not surprise me if my use of the term reruns uh, shows my age more than referencing WKRP in Cincinnati does. I just did not pay attention to what all the kids are saying the, anymore. I don't know. Sometimes I do. Like I pay enough attention to know that barely anybody uses live journal anymore. Wonder whatever became of me. Yes. Grayish lilac. That sounds like puce. Just say puce. The color is called puce. Oh, that definitely goes up there. Mm. There we go. Hey, kitty. Uh, what? Oh, right, that's an eyeball. Wait, wait. That was that way before the... Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, channel. Uh, right now, uh, oh, it's, uh, it's a bunch of videos. Let me see. Will this let me pull down? Let me see the menu. Okay, I've got a, um, uh, it looks like it's Manic Moth, her, uh, uh, recent one, hair color transformation going from, uh, Red to blue, I believe, was uh, what it was saying when I was loading things up. Uh, but yeah, she was saying something about um, associating uh, colors with numbers, and that somebody in the comments had suggested it might be synesthesia. I, I hope that's the one you were talking about. But there was another cr true crime one that was before that, but... Um, Unless I get up and go into the other room and um, 
pull up the uh, the uh, the um, the previous plate on the Roku. I don't remember that channel off the top of my head. The true crime one. It's one of the ones. Um, the narrator on that one um, had a British accent, but I'm not sure where from. Why do I keep trying to put that piece in that spot? There we go. Hi, kitty. Hello, Mernow. Meow, meow, meow. Hello, Well, this is all thanks to Yosef Garlos, the Minister of Propaganda. Hmm. Hi. Yes, I see you, Murnau. I know you're there. I know you want something out of me. What exactly is anybody's guess? Okay. What is this? Happen stuff, right? Paul Yosef Gerdals was born on October 29, 1897, in a small town outside of Dusseldorf. No, of course that one doesn't fit. Ah, there we go. That's where that one goes. <laughs> Try and fool me. His family never had a lot of money, but they still paid for him to go to a private all boys Roman Catholic high school. Um, hi, why are you leaning into me, cat? I know it's because he loves me, but it's kind of annoying right now. I'm trying to do my puzzle. Is that how that one goes? Please beat how that one. There we go. Let's hope. No. Almost done with Aquarius. Okay, well, it looks like... What? Nope. Okay, so it looks like I am still looking for a uh, piece for Aquarius, but I found other pieces that had a... Uh, tried to escape me, so... Now let's go with Pisces. Oh wait, now that's Scorpio up there. What am I doing with that? 
petty jealousy that they were better writers than he was. This gave him a taste of authority and a taste of control. They loved it. Aside from censoring the media, Gerbil set out to create new content in order to replace it. Gerbil knew that one of the most powerful ways mm. to incite emotions in human beings was through movies. The largest film studio in Berlin is called the Universal oh, I think this goes up here. Zellschaft, or the UFA for short. They were well respected mm -hmm. throughout the world for producing beautiful silent mm -hmm. films like Metropolis in 1927. Ooh. One of Gerbil's first orders of business was to forcibly take the studio over on behalf of the Nazi government. Both Goebbels and Hitler were huge movie buffs, but they made the decision to censor American films from the public. Adolf Hitler still had all of the new releases from Hollywood in his personal collection, but no one in the general population was ever allowed to see them. Years of Goebbels set out to make sure that everyone working in the German film industry was loyal to Hitler. Any of the actors who refused to shun any Jewish people from their lives and join the Nazi party were blacklisted from ever working again. Many of them were even prevented from leaving the country, and some actors even chose to commit suicide. Actresses from France oh. were auditioned for the prestigious UFA studio. That's right, that's what Mephisto's about. Trap, and many of them signed multi year contracts before the Nazis came into power. So while now it's on this Today I Found Out video about, uh, no, 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 it's, uh, Biographics, the spin-off station from Today I Found Out and the other ones that he does. Um, this is the biographics about, uh, uh, Goebbels. For example, the 1941 movie, I Accuse, was orchestrated to get the general population to agree with the Actium T4 mm. program, which pushed for the euthanization of disabled and terminally ill people. The plot of I Accuse is about a doctor at the beginning of his career. Oh. He gets married to a beautiful young woman, only to find out that she has been diagnosed with MS. Back then, the treatment for MS was nothing like it is today, and there's no cure for the disease. This means that the wife was dying a very slow and painful death. She begged him to give her a lethal injection, so she could be put out of that misery. He struggled with the decision, but ultimately assisted in her suicide. Much of the movie takes place in the court of war, where they are trying to decide if this man should be guilty of murder, or if he was doing her a favor by killing her. Despite being a propaganda film, it's actually very well written. Even today, anyone who watches the film may find themselves questioning their own morals, which is why it was considered to be one of the most dangerous propaganda films ever made. The movie convinced people that assisted suicide was only going to help their friends and family members who were suffering. So in the Action T4 program, it was passed. Innocent people were then taken from their homes and killed in the name of a perfect master race. The same kind of brainwashing had happened over and over again in the movies. The Nazi party didn't just help Goebbels' career, it also helped him get into a relationship. After graduating from his all-boys school, he was not used to mm. speaking to girls. At 34 years old in 1931, he married a fellow Nazi named Magda. Hitler was the best man at their wedding. In the public eye, they appeared to have the perfect German marriage. They had several children together, and they lived mm. on a huge gated compound in the woods outside of Berlin. However, years of Goebbels had a reputation for objectifying women, and since he was surrounded by beautiful actresses, he completely took advantage of his position. According to the testimony of a woman named Annalise Ulrich, she was given the starring role in one of the movies that was made at the UFA studio. Mm. Goebbels asked her if she wanted to go for a drive and talk about the movie, and he drove her straight to his compound. He offered her a drink and began to force himself on her. She started kicking and screaming and got free from him. He said that if she did not meet his demands, he would make sure that she never had a career in the movies. She decided to take her chances and ran out of the door. Thus, when she showed up the next day to work, there was an announcement that the film was cancelled and Ulrich was blacklisted from ever working in Germany again. Years of girls did this to women on a regular basis, but he did actually fall in love with one woman named Lida Barova. She was one of the few actresses who was truly a faithful Nazi, and she even turned down opportunities to work in Hollywood in favor of moving to Germany. She moved from Prague to Berlin in 1935 and married an actor named Gustav Frohlich. Frohlich had divorced his Jewish mm. wife in order to continue his successful acting career. According to Lida Barova, she felt pressured into being in a relationship with Josef Goebbels because she had heard mm. of all the stories about him ruining other actors' careers. She knew that if she said no, there was a huge chance that she and her husband would never work again. But she must have been a good actress because he became convinced that they should 
run away together. Gunnels told his wife, Magda, about the affair and said that he wanted a divorce. Mm. Magda went straight to Adolf Hitler, saying that Lila Barreto was seducing him and trying to tear their marriage apart. Gunnels begged for Hitler's permission to get a divorce. He also wanted to move to Japan and give up his position of power. He was willing to give up everything in order to be with Lila. But even as one of the most powerful Nazis in the Third Reich, Joseph Goebbels was still a prisoner to Hitler's power. Hitler refused to let Goebbels quit his job because he was far too valuable to the Nazi cause. The two men got into a screaming match that was witnessed and heard by dozens of people. Hitler urged him to give his relationship with Magda a second chance. He insisted that they give themselves another three months of living together to try and repair the relationship. If they could not fix their marriage, uh -huh. they could three months. That's how that goes. They could get a divorce. Okay. To leave Germany within 24 hours, he didn't have a car. After this incident, Joseph Goebbels was no longer one of Hitler's favorite men. His wife also hated him, and his love was gone. He was no longer invited over to dinner at Hitler's place, and he barely even spoke. The other higher up Nazis, they believed that Goebbels had become weak and that he was going insane. They questioned his loyalty, and he was no longer seen as the powerful man that he once was. If he wanted to be back in good graces with Hitler, he would need to do something. Goebbels was desperate to regain Hitler's trust, so in 1939 he incited mm. a mob by publishing a fake story in the newspaper that said a German man had been shot by a Jewish man in Paris. He spoke in the streets claiming that the Jews were trying to destroy society. He led an angry mob to burn down a synagogue. That same year he traveled to Poland with a documentary film crew to show what life was like inside of a Jewish ghetto. Mm. The people living in the ghetto and some of their faces oh, were were generally Maybe? dirty no. and sick. We now know that this is because the Nazis forced them into inhumane conditions no, in the first place. This one. However, the animals took this as an opportunity to compare them to animals saying that they were choosing to live that way. He said that they were less human and that they needed to be exterminated. This film was called The Eternal Jew and it premiered in 1940. In this movie, he tried to say that Jews were all criminals and that if the Nazis ever lost the war, then they may take over the world, forcing the German people to live in squalor. Humanity would sink into eternal darkness. It would fall into a dull and primitive state where the Jews to win this war. They are the incarnation of that destructive force that in these terrible years has guided the enemy war leadership into a fight against all that we see as noble, beautiful, and worth keeping. For that reason, okay, they hate so the Jews to hate us. They despise our culture and that in which they perceive as power over them nomadic worldview. They fear our economic and social standards which leave no room for their parasitic tribes. This documentary genuinely frightened the German people and they thought that concentration camps were absolutely justified. After visiting Auschwitz in person, Josef Goebbels wrote that the death and torture of these prisoners was so gruesome that he oh, yay. Write the details and Pisces is just about done. There's still one rogue piece on that. Oh, shit. So I was thinking of uh, ending the stream at four people. Wow. I was thinking of ending the stream at about half past midnight, so I've got about an hour left. Um, and then I'm going to, well, cover it up somehow, probably with all the puzzle boxes to protect it from kitties. And... Um, in 1941, Goebbels announced over the radio that Germany would be going to war with the Soviet Union. Goebbels did exactly what he did when he filmed the... Seriously? Okay. Looks like it's just grit. Soviet prisoners who were living in the mud, looking half-dead. He 
claims that this is how Russian people normally live and says that the Bolshevik party was controlled by Jews who were trying to take over the world. He successfully convinced the German public that by fighting Russia, they were fighting for their freedom. He was talking to the crowd of thousands of people at a small stadium in Berlin saying that there needed to be a total war. This was met with thunderous applause. But as you may already know, Germany's invasion of Russia is what led to their downfall. The Germans could not handle the harsh winters, and the United States had joined the Allied forces. Italy switched over to the Allies as well, and their stronghold in World War II it was suddenly falling like dominoes. <laughs> Now, you can probably tell so far in this story that this world is just crazy. But after the invasion of the Soviet Union, his mental state became more and more unraveled. He encouraged elderly men and young boys to sacrifice their lives for the sake of Germany, and baby-faced child soldiers were even sent off to war. He said that every man, woman, and child needed to be ready to die for the motherland. According to Wilfred van Oven, a man who worked on Josef Goebbels' staff, they were at a meeting when a bomb was dropped in the garden of his house. The glass of all the windows shattered. While everyone else on the staff ducked for cover, Josef Goebbels never even flinched. He just brushed the broken glass off his notes and continued reading his speech as if nothing had happened. He somehow remained completely composed on the outside while the panic inside was tearing him apart. At the end of the war, Hitler told Goebbels that he knew that they were going to lose the war. He was preparing to go to his bunker with plans to commit suicide. He appointed Goebbels as the new Chancellor of Germany, and he wanted him to stay behind and run the government once the Allies invaded. Goebbels was so devoted that he simply refused to live without Hitler. He told his wife and all of his children to clean themselves, put on their Sunday best, and go to the Fuhrer's bunker. On April the 30th, Hitler committed suicide, leaving Goebbels as Germany's new Chancellor. It's all a position <sighs> The following day, Goebbels and Magda... I wonder how many conspiracy theorists are in the comments of this one going on about how Hitler survived in Argentina for however long the theories say. I mean, that that's not a conspiracy theory that's completely out of nowhere because there were so, uh, several Nazi officers who... It did indeed, you know, take refuge in Argentina specifically, but Hitler was not amongst them. He was very much one of those death before dishonor types and... Oh, God. Jesus Christ. Ah, oh, my sister's trying to bug me over something. Oh. I'll see what the hell she wants after I get to my uh, stopping point with this puzzle here, because, yeah, I got a little under an hour. Hmm. Oh, wait. That one goes on that side. Seriously? Ha ha ha. Wait. Where the hell is. Oh, right there. That makes sense. Ha ha ha. Okay. Okay. I think I know where those Leo pieces that I need are at. They're probably up in here, but. Oh, you know what? I think that one. Yep, that one goes there. Are there any others that I can definitely. Definitely, definitely, maybe. 
This one looks like it might. Yes, ha ha ha. Okay, that piece goes right there. Okay. Okay, so there's one more piece in Leo that's still trying to elude me, but it looks like this whole working my way across and up is working for me, so I'm not going to mess with a good thing. There we go. That goes there. Why are why are all of these Libra pieces in with the Virgo? Fuck if I know. Fuck if I know. Wonder whatever became. God damn it! Fuck you, old television. Oh, okay. There's that piece on Capricorn and Aquarius I was looking for. All right. Okay. Fuck you, old television. You drive me to drink. Uh, I actually recorded a version of uh, um, the WKRP jingle for a uh, donut. So, uh, what's that thing called? Donations drive for my station a couple of years ago. <laughs> it's stupid and ridiculous, but you know, it was it was in the rotation of a uh, station ID. <laughs> uh. Let's go there. Better go there because that's where it makes sense. Mm -hmm. 
No, that piece makes no sense over there. What am I doing that shit for? Okay, this looks like it goes. Huh. There we go. There's a piece that makes sense right here. There we go. Hmm. Okay. And okay, that one goes there. Um, please? No? Okay. Oh, right there. doing shit. Hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Why do I keep trying to put that one there? Okay, so it looks like there's a Virgo piece that's hiding from me, but I will find it. I found the other pieces. There. That's the one that goes there. Virgo piece trying to escape me. I'll show him. I'll show them all. They laughed at me at the community college. There's that Pisces piece that I was looking for. Okay. Hmm.
Okay, that just looks like a dress thing. Mm-hmm. Okay. And Labra's done. Oh, you know, at this rate, I might finish this. Son of a bitch. Yes. What's up, Nigel? But Nigel's acting very concerned. I don't know why.
There we go. Oh my gosh, I think I am going to finish this tonight. Oh my gosh. This would not only be the first uh, puzzle I've completed completely by myself, but also the only one I've completed in a few hours. Hmm. 
Yes. What's up, Nigel? Nigel, bud. My Nigel. I know, sweetheart. I haven't been paying attention to you for like, what time is it now? Uh, two and a half hours. Holy shit, only two and a half hours? I know. I know. I'm supposed to give Nigel my undivided attention all day, every day. And if I don't, well, I'm just failing. I, I don't mean to fail, Nigel. I really don't. <laughs> I'll have conversations with him like this all day. Okay, okay I think this is supposed to be right about here, maybe. I don't know. I'll figure it out. Yep, okay. Ha, ha. Oh. oh, there's that Leo piece that was escaping me. And Aries is basically done. I could probably send a, find a piece that would go right there a little bit better. But. Oh, is this something from Everything is Terrible now? Probably. I love everything is terrible. Oh, there's that one. Okay. Oh my gosh, I'm going to finish this tonight. I'm pretty sure. Oh yeah, this is definitely something off of everything is terrible. Oh, 
course that doesn't go there. Now, of course, that piece doesn't go there. That might make my life slightly easier than it was three seconds ago. Hmm. Oh, there's the EIT music, yep. Okay, that does go there then. Okay. Okay, so Taurus is almost done. Just got to find where those elusive pieces are at. Oh, is that another one? No, that might make a, some semblance of sense, and we can't have that going on, can we? Oh. Thank you. 
whole like fighting rivalry that they had has been more than me from like rivaling families. It's more about having some sexual tension between the two of them. And like the reader can see that coming from a mile away, but oblivious, and that's what makes it so fun. And so that's a note that I love as well. So giving your characters some lengthy backstory that happens long before the novel even starts, I think that can lead to a really awesome romance. Number three is to have their differences be as pronounced as their similarities. So I love novels where you'll have two characters that are coming at something from like such opposing backgrounds. Maybe one of them is a huge optimist and the other one is like a cynical pessimist. Maybe one of them is super shy and introverted and the other one is very extroverted and outgoing. So they clash in a lot of ways, but at their core, it's great when they have the same fear and desire, which is usually something like nobody else has made them feel like they belong before or they felt so lonely, they don't feel like this intense loneliness. Something like that. So when characters have very pronounced yes, problems, Nigel. But deep inside, they have the same. He's uh, acting so concerned, and I don't know why. Is it because I'm breaking my routine, honey? Number four, and this is one that I see not happening enough, although it seems pretty obvious. And this is for the two characters to have shared interests. A lot of times in romances or in romantic subplots with the novel, it's very easy to have your character's relationship. Like, serious cat, like, what is your damage right now? Who hurts you? Who harmed you, Nigel? Yes. I love you. I love you. What's wrong, Nigel? Look, I'm almost done with the puzzle. When I'm done with the puzzle, then it's dinner time. How's that sound? Hmm. It does go there. Okay. Okay. No, that makes no sense. There we go. That's what makes sense. No. This one? Yes! Ha ha! No. Okay. 
And Gemini is completed. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. Okay, I've got... Uh, I set my watch a little fast, so I'm not late for shit. But I've got between 10 and 15 minutes before I was going to... Um, um, shut this off. So, can I finish this in that time? I mean, at this point, I'm committed to finishing it anyway. I just want to know if I can finish it before my watch says, um, half past. I love that organ music. I don't know what the hell this is right now. What was that? Oh, oh no, no, no. No phone, don't die on me. Oh my gosh. Can I finish this before phone battery decides it's done? Because I only have a rough idea where the hell my charger is. So I can't run over there and plug it in immediately because... Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. There we go. No. Uh, yep, up there, up there. <gasps> yes! Oh, I finished it! Oh, and I've got five minutes to spare. Oh, can we turn this shit around, please? Please? No, turn it around. There we go. There's the button I want. <gasps> I did it! I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, log off now so I can charge up my phone and... <gasps> oh my god! In under three hours, I'm so happy.